In this class, we are going to learn how to create editable table in Oracle Visual Builder applications using Batch Editable Table, also known as BDP. In our earlier classes, that is in the 2023 edition, we had seen how to create editable table with the help of BDP, wherein we had created the classes for individual methods, that is in the BDP, that is to add the item, remove the item, update the item, so and so forth things using the JavaScript option available in the VVCS. In 2024 edition of BDP, we are going to see how to create the variable over here that is with the help of buffering data provider type itself. So first of all, we will try to create the type and then the variable based on this BDP type so that we can avoid the JavaScript methods or the functions that is to create the add item, delete items and so forth things over here. So we can remove all those stuffs because all the things that is to add the item, remove the item, reset the unsubmittable items and so forth things will be taken care by visual builder type. Now first of all, I will drag and drop the table component over here before we see how to create the BDP variable. Next, I will populate the table data over here using this business object that is personal business object. Select this, click on next. So you might have a scenario wherein you have to create the editable table based on some database table or it might be any other business object or even the rest response. Now here I will select the ID. I will display the first name, last name, higher date and the salary of a person. Primary key will be our ID. Click on next, click on finish. So this is the first criteria before working with editable table that is we have to have a table first of all. Next I will restrict the height of this table using this style property over here and let me restrict the height to 55 vh. This should be sufficient. Done this is the first step. Next step in making any table editable is we have to set this edit mode to row edit. That is over here to row edit so that when we click on any row this will be popped up. So currently we have not modified this table and we have just drag and drop the table component over here in this page before we go ahead and create the BDP variable. Now as soon as we populate this table with the help of quick start what VBCS will do is it will create the SDP variable also it will create a type. So it will be based on this business object what I have used for this use case that is the person business object and it is having few data which I have added. Coming to the fields, I have created few fields over here like the ID, first name, last name, so and so forth things. Now let us go back to our class that is creating the BDP variable. So in order to create the variable of type BDP, first of all we have to create the type. So as of now, if we go to this variables and click on plus, here we won't see the type that is buffering data provider. Right now we see ADP and SDP only. So in order to create the type, we have to create the type of BDP. So this type we have to create at the application level, click on this web application, go to the types. Here we have to click on this type and click on this from code. Click on this. Now here let me name this as OJS slash OJ buffering data provider type. Click on create. Now here we have to upload the type definition. Now you might ask me where is this type definition we will get. So Oracle has uploaded the type definition for creating this BDP type in Visual Builder over here. You can just click on this download the raw file and rename that file to bdp.ts. So currently the extension which is supported over here is .ts or .d.ts. If you straight away download this file, it will download the file with the name index.d.ds. So no need to rename as well. But in my case, I have renamed this file to bdp.ts. Click on this and select the file. I have file over here bdp.ts. Click on open. So our BDP file got loaded successfully. Coming to the display label over here, I will name this as Jet Buffering Data Provider. Just tab out. Next, once the type has been created at the application level, next we will go to this page that is main start page over here. Go to the variables here, click on plus variable and let me name this as V person BDP type of variable. Coming to the type, we have to select the buffering data provider. So in the display name, we had provided Jet buffering data provider. So it's over here. Select this and click on create. So as soon as you click on create, our variable will be created. Next is we have to map the SDP variable, which our table has created when we dragged and dropped over here and populated the table with the help of this quick start. So we had seen that it had created the SDP variable in the backend that is over here already. Now the same SDP variable we have to map over here under the data provider. Now I will map this SDP that is to the data provider. Click on save. 
So once this is done, go to the page designer. Now next job is we have to associate our table to this buffering data provider. Now how to associate this is we have to select this table, go to the data here, click on the FX. So instead of this SDP, what we have to do is we have to expand this BDP and we have to map this instance over here, not the BDP variable itself. We have to drop BDP dot instance over here. That is we have to drag this instance. Click on save. Now click on refresh. Now whatever data what you see populated in this table is from the BDP variable. So in our next classes, we will see how to make this table editable and how we can make use of the BDP variable items. That is the methods available within this variable that is add item, remove item, call item, so on and so forth things with the help of call variable action within the action chain. In our previous class, we had seen how to populate the table with the help of buffering data provider variable. In this class, we will see how to make this table editable. Right now, if I just click on this any row, it is just getting popped out and it is not allowing the user to edit. So first of all, in order to enable the editing feature, what we had done in our previous class is we had set this edit property to row edit. So this is the first and the foremost thing we have to do. Next is we have to drag and drop the appropriate fields over here which, which supports the editing of the data. Like here in this case this is a string. We have to drag and drop the input that is capable of taking the string type of data. Now here if I scroll down there is this input text. Just drag and drop it over here. Next input text we have to drag and drop it over here last name. Higher date is of type date. Let me see if there is any appropriate input field. There is input date. Just drag and drop it over here. Coming to the salary, we have to drag and drop the number. It's over here, number. Select this, that is the input text and remove this label in from here. Also remove this read only. Coming to the second, that is the last name. Here also we have to uncheck this read only and remove the text label. Coming to the input date, here date we have to remove from the label and uncheck this read only property. And the last but not the least, this number. For salary, we have to remove the label and uncheck this read only. Now go to the live mode and double click. So here we will be able to modify the details. Now as soon as the user clicks outside the table, the details whatever we had entered, it gets wiped off. So these things we will see slowly how to persist the data whatever user has entered in the edit mode. Now this thing is done. Next what we have to do is we should have a variable which can hold the data whatever user has modified. Now in order to do that, what we can do is we have to create a type in order to hold the person's data. For that, we have to click on this type, click from this endpoint, expand the business object. So in our case, what we are doing is we are making use of the business object in order to demonstrate the use case. So I'm going to select my business object, that is the person. So here I will name this as get person type and I will check everything except this links. Click on finish. Done. Go to the variables. Here we have to create one variable with the name v current person. So this will be based on my type that is get person type click on create that's it this should be sufficient for us so default value will be null in our case go back to our page designer there are couple of modes over here in the editable table if we look at the OJ documentation one is the navigation mode another is the edit mode so if you look at the information over here you will see the details now we can modify all those things by dragging and dropping if conditions and so forth things but it will extend the length of this class or the video. So what I will do is I will copy paste this portion of code that is if mode is navigation if mode is edit. So let me just copy this from here and go to my page and let me see the template where it is oh, it's over here that is the first name. So here we have to copy and paste those if conditions. Let me just format. So first condition we are checking whether the mode is navigation. Another mode what is supported in the editable table is edit. So OJ is having a concept of cell but in the visual builder we are having current. So let me just populate this as current. Done. Now let me just copy paste same thing for other templates as well. So whatever we dragged and dropped this input component it will create the template for a table. So all those things are the basics. I hope you all know all those things already. So let me just copy paste for other fields as well. Now for the higher date, let me end the if condition. Coming to the salary, here also we have to add the end if condition. Sorry, it didn't add over here if condition. Let me add after this input number. Yeah, 
Now let me just format the file. Let me just go back to this design view. When the editable mode is navigation, what we are doing is we are showing the details with the help of this bind text. As soon as the any row goes to the edit mode, what it does is it will go to this if condition that is for the edit mode, then it will show input text input text, input date and the salary which is the input component. So all those things, for the ID we don't have anything so it is not allowing us to edit. So these things we have done in this class. Now when the person is editing the details over here, we want this to be stored in the correct person details. Now that we are mapping over here, now we have to select this first name which is under the if condition which is if mode is edit, we have to select the first name, go to the data. From here instead of current data what we have to do is we have to map this to the current person first name. Paste this over here. Now similarly that is for the second name also go to the if condition that is for the edit. Instead of current dot data we want this to be stored in the current person last name. Now scroll down coming to the date we want in the edit mode the date to be stored in v person date that is over here v person higher date drag and drop it over here and the last part is the salary click select this input number and go to the data here instead of current data what we have to do is we have to map this data to v person salary that's it click on save so in this class what we have done is we have created the type which can hold the current person data what the user is modifying. So this is the variable which we had created based on the type. Coming to the page designer, first of all we had seen how to set the edit mode property for our table that is to row edit. That is we had selected the table gone to the all here in the edit mode we had selected this row edit. Then we had individually dragged and dropped the input component that is to suit the type of the variable like the string date over here and the number. Then coming to the templates over here what we had done is we had copy pasted from this OJ cookbook that is the if condition that is the edit mode is navigation edit mode is edit for the editable table and pasted over here. So in our next class we will see how to create the events that is before row edit and the row edit end like how we have seen in the previous classes that is for editable table.